To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Well, good morning, gardeners and homesteaders. Welcome back to the Backyard Gardens podcast. And we got to talk about summer plants. These are the ones that just are the hungriest of hungries. You ever get those that you just feel like they're just not going to yeah, grow right, Patavia? Not beyond year three in. <laughs> <laughs> year, year three. Remember, Batavia's magic year is three. Oh, I have to ask You must have had mom. a great third birthday. I don't remember it. If I it bet was. it was amazing. Yeah. It must have been an amazing day. <laughs> well, there you go. So, yeah, we definitely need to talk about this because I feel like in my garden, we'll get going into summer. Aside from the heat and stuff, it just seems like a lot of times some of my plants will sh- show certain signs of being very tired Mm -hmm. and um this is a good way to remember that like hey these are heavy feeders but more importantly the right nutrients for them too because it is a lot different than the seasons we've just come out of so um fertilizer is the name of the game today but before we get started we need you to do us a couple favors one you can go find the link below buy some seeds use a discount code one million to get 10 percent off in a free pack of seeds you can become a subscriber and you need to seriously consider using the link below to buy the planter app. Um, it is a great app. It is the app to use to plan your garden it is a proud sponsor of the show. And we are happy to have it here with its drag and drop interface. It's easy to see visual concept of laying out a garden using all of the, com- the companions and combatives going through the list, seeing all the different plants, hundreds of varieties. It's really good. It's got a great, great discount for you guys. So please check that out and um, get going planting your gardens because as we talk about this episode, we're going to refer to the planter app and how we use it to judge on where we're going to plant next and what goes where. So um, this has really become... As much as I hate to rely on technology, it's become almost integral to use to plan out our garden. And as far as like feeding and stuff goes, it helps with your, you know, nutrient balances within your garden. So check it out. That's the Planter app. That's the P-L-A-N-T-E-R app available on Google and Apple Store. Boom. All right. So, at this point, do you have summer plants in the ground at all? When they hear this, I will. As I'm recording okay. this, I don't. But you're So, you're gearing up because we're not yeah, too far I've out from release date. Yeah, I've started to harden some things off that are summer-like. We just got, looking at the 10-day forecast, we just got out of the, I had like a 40-degree, 40 42-degree night. Earlier in the week, we had like lows of 30s like 38 39 degrees and so i'll be honest i um i cheat i have a cheat code when it comes to hardening things off a lot of the stuff i harden off once it gets outdoors it's it's like it's out there (laughs) you're done so so i wait a little while longer for that convenience (coughs) um so my first outs because i started to apply these first or my peppers and a couple of flowers and things. I'll pull some things into the garage if I have to. Um, but, you know, a 50 degree night is where we're headed. 60 degree nights as a low. Um, I feel good about those plants being outside because they should be you know, on the road to getting planted pretty soon. Yeah. So um, during this episode, too, you guys have to forgive me. I'm getting over a cold. So if you hear me cough, I don't have a cough button. We're not that level show yet. Um So sorry, but if you hear it, that's what's going on. Yeah, it's um, I'm half and half. Mm -hmm. So at the time of recording, and if you've watched the YouTube channel at all, you know where I stand. I'm holding off on certain plants just because we're getting cool nights still. But we do have a lot of things in the ground that are um, summer vegetables. And so what I always do is I start with a pre-planting fertilizer. Mm Mm-hmm. First and foremost, um, once you and that kind of, you know, I know we've talked about this on the show a lot and on on YouTube, but this is kind of gets you in the right direction. And there's some plants that you can just do that and almost walk away from. 
you know, and then yeah. there's some plants that really you need to kind of stay on top of it and keep feeding more and more. And um, it's funny, you know, I guess my audience on YouTube is mostly along in the same boat as me as far as like using fertilizer and stuff like that. And I know it's a very polarized subject and a lot of people don't use it, but I've had people come to me this year and say like, hey, I used fertilizer in my spring garden and there was a huge difference in the way things grew. They're noticing that it's faster and, you know, bigger and stuff like that. So, um, you know, we want to apply that same, you know, a- approach to this as far as like getting your harvest. Because, I mean, a lot of times, like for me, I'm battling the heat. Like it's a race to the hottest part of summer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then also the summer pests can get pretty dang bad, too. So you want to start getting your harvest before the pests get there because you don't want to be harvesting and yeah. battling pests at the same time. Yeah, I um, <laughs> I drove probably Uh-oh. about 20, 22, 25 minutes you know, one way to pick up some fertilizer. Um, and it's under the guise of... Hey, I bought some last year. I got, I felt like a a real good deal. And for me, I'm always, if I'm rebuying something, checking the previous price I paid. And so everywhere else, you know, your Amazons, your Walmarts, your Home Depots, it was like twice the price, which reminds me that last year, I remember acknowledging that it was a sale, like it was a deal. So anyway, I I ended up uh, this obscure company, you know, and dropping it off. They delivered it to a hardware store. And because at the beginning of the opening, I was like, eh, you know, you said it's time to fertilize. But I drove these like 25 minutes there and back. So basically almost an hour round trip. And it didn't occur to me the smell of the bags. Yeah. And they were in my car. And it was a cooler day here in Chicago. And I was like rolling down windows, like, I don't know, you know, am I going to make it back? Um, so, to your point of like starting with a pre planting fertilizer, I focus on kind of trying to get the thing done for a bit all at one time. Yeah. So, um, and my memory is bad. So, I typically will come in with a handful if I'm doing if transplanting versus like direct sowing or something, a handful of uh, compost and, you know, about a handful, maybe less than a ha- handful of, definitely less than a handful of fertilizer. Um, pretty, pretty evenly uh, placed as far as the MPK. Yeah, you know, all purpose more or less, unless I'm planting something like potatoes. Um, but my intention is to get it in, you know, and recognizing it's going to be some time before you're actually starting to feed on that. But I should be able to buy myself, you know, months, depending on what the crop is. I, I have feel like mm, either I feel like I have a little bit more time for these things to develop on my end or I just haven't embraced the idea of you could actually have peppers in, you know, July instead of waiting until August. You yeah. know, um, it's probably the latter. I probably just haven't embraced it yet. You know, um, which again, it's fine. And I'll, I'll do time. It's, a, it's a early enough in the season to where you could begin to keep an eye on that. Yeah, 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 for sure. And that's why we wanted to talk about this so early in the year. Because in the past, I mean, look, look, everybody. The couch is out. We're going to kick our feet up. I'm going to tell the doctor. We have not been the best about relaying information in the past. And we've, like, in a timely fashion for some things. And this is one of those where we wanted to talk about it early in the season so that we could have people have enough time to digest it and make a plan for themselves on what they wanted to do, you know. Um, Now, there's always time in the middle of the season. Like, again, for some of these, it's not going to be – you fertilize once and then it's like, oh, well, you, you should probably, and I, I hesitate to say you need to. So I'm going to use, I'm going to be safe and say you should probably come back and add more fertilizer throughout the season, which a lot of people do. But, um, you know, I want to go real quick before we get into it. I want to say this. We're going to focus mostly on talking about organic fertilizers because that's what we feel the majority of people use. Um, the differences in those is organic fertilizers are safer, meaning they're, it's harder to burn your plants with them, mm-hmm. burn the roots, um, stuff like that. It refeeds the soil, helps with the soil retention, and synthetic, 
will feed immediately versus organic, which will take time to release generally about two to three weeks in a warm season to start to interact with the soil and release the nutrients. So synthetic will feed it right away. Mm-hmm. And it is an even though you want to be fully organic, if you have a situation, you're like, look, I just really need to get some food to them. Don't hang up synthetic fertilizers. Like, keep that in your toolbox. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it just because you use it once isn't the end of the world. You know, if, I mean, if you use it all the time, it's not the end of the world. But just keep that in your toolbox. But you have to be careful when you use them because it can burn your plants. And you've got to be more cautious with your measurements and stuff like that. Um, I know with my organic fertilizers, I'm not very cautious. I do four handfuls per row to start out. So that's how I do it. <clears throat> but that's like the fertilizer. Um, what do you call that? Preamble, I guess. I don't know. Um, just to kind of get that out of the way. Mm-hmm. But yeah, for organic fertilizers, which is what we're focusing on, um, there's all kinds you can use. But in the spring, we know that we're creating leaves and we're eating leaves, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, why do you laugh? I think it's cute. Yeah, like we're creating leaves and we're eating leaves, yeah. Right. So, like, most of the what you eat is m- mostly leaf. So, nitrogen causes leaf growth. So, we feed a lot of nitrogen. But in the summertime, we don't want to do that. Just plain and simple. We, we want to make sure that we're tempered in the amount of nitrogen that we use agreed agreed i think that you know a lot of the crops that we have in the summer are what we refer to as fruiting crops yeah and it takes a lot of energy to you know in the stages of those crops oftentimes is you're going to put on leaves plants are going to get taller they're going to in some cases get wider right and then they're going to transition to say all right Look, look, I'm speaking to myself as a plant. This is as big as you're going to get, right? <laughs> like, let's start now <laughs> being productive and, and producing the thing that you really, you really, really want here. You know, so if it's a tomato plant, the tomatoes, obviously. And so you want to be careful about, you know, continuing to pump in nitrogen as an example, because you could end up with a lot of leaves and those plants are looking beautiful. But are you slowing down the production of the actual fruit? Yes, you are. You know, Uh, so and that's just an example. I think that um, if I am to start keeping an eye on it, it's probably peppers for me. You know, because there is a a long road that I follow for peppers and I have really good success with growing peppers. Um, But I really like to let those peppers get ripe on the vine. And that adds many weeks to the process for me, you know, and so I need to be careful about how, you know, how I'm feeding these plants. So it's just not focused on putting on more leaves, 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 left leaves. Um, So, yeah, I, I think, you know, that's when you lean back to something that's more uh, evenly balanced, but also, you know, I don't, for some of these crops, I'm just not to your point earlier, feeding them once and done, you right. know, something like lettuce to be quite frank, because by the time I plant it and the time I expect it to bolt, you know, you'll get that first feeding and then, you know, I'll be pulling you up you know, before yeah. I feed you again. I, I wouldn't consider that a heavy feeder, you know? So, um, and by the time you guys <clears throat> hear this, most of y'all will be, will be done with lettuce anyway. Right. And I I played a little clip for Batavia before we got started. And I swear, this is not something I ever even expected to bring up on this show um, when I decided to do this. And um, I don't really care. I mean, it, it, it's dorky, but I love it. So I recently got my ham radio license. Um, and if you guys are ham radio nerds and you want to hit me up, KQ4RQA is my call sign. But anyways... Day one, I'm not even lying. Day one, I turn on the radio and there are guy, there's a guy asking an older gentleman about fertilizer. And I'm going to put a video together and talk about it on YouTube. Um, and I'll play the clip. But the, the older gentleman, you could tell he'd been gardening for years and he knew what he was talking about. And he was talking about the nitrogen in the plant. And it was really important the way he put it because the guy was saying he got a he got a soil test, came back, and anytime you get a soil test, they always tell you add nitrogen. End of story. They will always tell you to add nitrogen because it's water soluble. Mm-hmm. It will leach out. 
So he was like, yeah, I was going to put this in that. I'm not going to tell you the whole conversation. You got to go watch the video. Um, that's not even made yet. Well, at the time of recording. And he was like, the guy, the gentleman was like, you, you don't want to put all that nitrogen on there because what you're going to do is you're going to grow big plants, mm-hmm. but you're not going to have anything to support it. So you've got to do it. So mm-hmm. that being said, I have you want me to derail this conversation real quick well, i feel like i need derail to derail it which you may be you may pick up you may pick this piece up from it anything to support the plant so there is a you know you see how so let me derail things you've seen people <laughs> with videos <laughs> where and you've seen it in your own plants if you're starting um you know peppers as again a good example from seed and or you buy the transplants sometimes you'll see flowers on those plants they're still big enough to hold in your hand that's how small they are right you'll see sometimes a little pepper growing on it and people sometimes get excited about like oh you know but you look at that pepper plant and i know that that pepper plant isn't big enough to support additional fruit on it right Right. you know so do the hard thing pick pick the flower off, pinch it off, pinch off the bud of the pepper. What the old timer said was, you're not going to have anything to support it. And I heard you're not going to have a strong root system because all mm-hmm. you've been doing is developing leaves. And I don't know that the collective, we talk about that a lot. I think we talk about it implied. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a fault on our part. So um, first of all, I, I've got to de- you did not derail it at all but i'm going to um our summer gardens are not vegetable gardens are fruit gardens <laughs> here we go well, here we go look first of all shout out to all the people who ever had instead of encyclopedias and did all of their book reports on encyclopedias and got in trouble for them but i looked it up and britannica says a fruit is a fleshy or dry ripened ovary of a fruit fr- flowering plant Enclosed the seeds or seeds, enclosing seeds or seeds. And in that list are tomatoes, cucumbers, and peppers. There you go. So that's, I, I bring that up because you're saying we're, they're fruiting plants, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is exactly right. And so when I think about this, I think about the demand on the plant. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a theory and I, I have a, a very strong theory that like plants that don't create fruits or create very small fruits, i.e. a cherry pepper or a cherry tomato plant, they create an absorbent amount of produce. I mean, how many people have grown a yellow pear tomato and been like, I got so many tomatoes I couldn't even begin to keep up with them. Like, I hate it. You know what I mean? Because the demand to create a large fruit is more than to create a small fruit mm-hmm. or no fruit. So therefore the nutrition, I don't even want to talk, call it fertilizer. I'm going to call it nutrition. The nutrition for the plant, the demand of nutrition is much higher for that. And so that's like in my garden, you won't see me growing full size eggplants. You'll see me growing like the itchy bond types mm-hmm. and stuff like that because I get more of a produce off of it. That's why I don't grow giant tomatoes because I get more smaller tomatoes off of my plants you know um so there's that nutrition need is there and when you start thinking about it and i mean you always need to add nitrogen so you do need to add some to an extent and i'll tell you later on in the episode how i add it in the summer but you start out with the nitrogen but then you've got to get your fertilizer balance and i I just don't want people to overcomplicate it You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know what you mean. (laughs) (laughs) She's looking at me cross-eyed. I'm like, go ahead, speak, speak. (laughs) Yeah, no, I mean, I think that, so, um, the fertilizer I picked up, I looked and it's 533, you know, which seems counter to what we've been talking about, but I- Why is that? Because it's not evenly balanced, but let me finish my thought. Yeah. Uh, But- to your point of nitrogen, which would be the first number five, being water soluble, soluble, soluble. I probably soluble. should have tried that word. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew, but I got a little cocky in my head. Like, you got this, girl. Yeah, no, you, you didn't have it. But y'all know what I mean. Um, that I'm okay with it being just a couple of notches higher, you know. And I won't steal the thunder of the interesting chat uh, that you're listening to on your hand radio. Um, it's not completely out of bounds. It's not designed for something that needs heavy nitrogen. It's just a little bit. You know, got a little bit more nitrogen in it compared to the others. And that's going to be my base fertilizer for the year. When I talk about a, you know, all purpose granular fertilizer, if you hear me say that here or on a video, that is what I'm talking about. And I didn't necessarily seek out those numbers, but I, it's an organic fertilizer and I used it last year. I felt like I had success. It was something that I could compute in my head. Right. right. You know, um, sometimes it's hard to find something that's absolutely equal and organic when it comes to those. Like when we talk about 10, 10, 10, it's not necessarily 10, 10, 10. We're asking you to go. It could be five, five, five. Right. Um, right. So and that number doesn't matter. How? Yeah. Yeah how high it is yeah yeah exactly um so well yeah yeah i'll go with that um so i look at this and say get a starting point and i think more importantly when it comes to these heavy feeders like when you said hey we want to try to get into this early is try to identify a regimen because that's going to be if, if this is something that's been a challenge for you or you feel like it's really complex if you get a regimen going then you can determine how good or bad that regimen is as you apply it and so when we say things like something that's evenly balanced you know it's almost like a do no harm approach right you yeah. know you're not the guy on the young buck on the Mm, yeah, that's we're recording on a Friday, so I'm going to go with that being. You know? yeah. So you're not going with, you know, something that's absolutely uneven. That was his intention, you know, um, but instead you're doing something that's pretty even. And so the plants are going to eat. Right. Yeah. And then you can talk about whether or not like for my potatoes, you know, I'll add, I always get them confused. It's either bone or, or blood. Yeah. Um, Blood is for nitrogen, yeah. bone is for roots. So I'll add, I still get them confused. <laughs> I look back, <laughs> it's a, uh, I'll add bone meal, right? You know, and so I remember only because it's kind of powdery. Um, but I'm also still adding that 533. You know, and potatoes are interesting as you think about it, because, again, I know you're wrapping up your potatoes, but they're heavy feeders. I think corn is a heavy feeder. When we talk about actual plants, you know, we're just not talking about tomatoes and, and peppers for no reason. They're, those are heavy feeders. Um, and when being a couple episodes ago and recently on a video of yours, like find the plant, focus on it, figure out how to get the most out of it. You know, corn for you, I think it's a good example of you're just not going to plant some seeds and then look up and be in a cornfield. No, no. It, it takes some practice. It takes some um, intention, if you will. And plainly put, fertilizing takes intention, right? You know, it does. It does. And I'm actually looking at a very, 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 very enough varies there. Popular um, fertilizer website. Mm -hmm. They have the tone in the name. So um, I was looking at the numbers on their um, fertilizers. Mm -hmm. So and when I say numbers, we're talking about the NPK numbers. And you said like you want to use, you know, you're using like a five. I was just, I was looking at numbers when you said it. So tell me the numbers you were using again. I want to call it uh, five thirty three because I think it's kind of cool to step out. People would normally say five three three. Yeah. Yeah. So the five thirty three. I like it. I'm down. <laughs> Whatever. How about five hundred and thirty three? Is that no? It's probably too much. Yeah. No. It's like I was watching. A, I was watching something the other day, and the guy was like, "Did you call nine ninety one one?" And he was like, "Who calls it ninety one one?" And you're like, "What's wrong with you?" I don't even know what I was watching. But anyways. So that that first number being a little bit higher, I think it's a good thing because what did we just talk yeah. about? We talked about how the nitrogen is water soluble, so you need to add it Show more. Off. But what we also know is the phosphorus does not come out of your garden. The phosphorus, the if point. your plant doesn't use it, it stays in your soil. So I don't, I, I never suggest anybody using, and the reason why we always say like use a well balanced and five three three is pretty or five, what is it? 533 is pretty well balanced <laughs> fertilizer. Um, 
because if you start getting all crazy with it and you don't know what's in your soil, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you could be causing issues. But if you're doing a well balanced, you're you're pretty safe. So um, that's a it's a good safe approach. Now it's interesting. While you were talking, I was looking at them, and one of the ones that I use a lot is the um, and this is just. It's not because I searched out. It's what's available near me <laughs> and at the price that I want to pay. Very important part somebody. of this. I use the Garden Tone. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And it is uh, it is a 344. Mm-hmm. And so I was looking at it and I'm like, okay. So now I'm starting to see that. I'm starting to see. I, I never realized like for a while I thought it was a 10, 10, 10. And then I go and I look at the plant tone, and it is, I've got, it's not easy to find. I wish I had like a comparison. Why don't they know that people are doing podcasts? What's wrong with them? <laughs> they ha- it's a 533. So that tells me that I'm switching over to the 533. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be switching over because I want that extra nitrogen in there, but I don't want to overload it. So what that's going to actually do... Because what I do is I put what I told you originally in there. And in the summer, every other feeding, I'll put in blood meal, which is like a 20 zero zero. Yeah. Which is, I guess, in your world, 2600. <laughs> I put a 2600 in there. If somebody didn't know, if we didn't justify, they'd be like, what? No, isn't it just 200 in my world? Oh, no, it's 20. It's 2000. 26 zero zero. I thought you said it's 20 zero zero. Maybe it's 20. Okay, 20 zero, whatever. Yeah, so it's 2000. <laughs> But so I'll put that in. So I'm trying to kind of balance it. Mm -hmm. But if I switch to something that has a little bit in there, then I can do it every I would say every third time I would add nitrogen to it. So, you know, you're actually I would be saving money Mm -hmm. in the long run. And I would be because those other those last two numbers are the same as the other ones. So I'm just adding it. And this is part of it. Now, I don't know how they've come up with it, but this is just like how I've used my garden. And when I start, cause what'll happen to me in the middle. So in July, we get a lot of humidity and we get a lot of rain <clears throat> and it's only in July. It seems like, and after that, all of my plants start to yellow. Yeah. And that means that there's a nitrogen deficiency. Well, then you're like, well, why is there nitrogen deficiency? Because it's water soluble and it washed out of the garden. Show off. What? Saying the word right. What did I say right? Oh, Deficiency? No. no. Oh, soluble. Yeah. <laughs> I was practicing earlier. What in my head? That's why. <laughs> but that's why, like, I'll start adding this stuff in. Mm-hmm. And it took me a long time to realize. Like, I remember going out and looking at my peppers and be like, man, they look terrible. Shoot them some fertilizer, some nitrogen to be exact. Boom. And the way I know is nitrogen because it was fish fertilizer. Which is typically like a five one one, so it's mostly nitrogen. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know I've used Garden Tone before as well, and that it falls right in line with. I was looking for something that was organic, and also looking for something that was available for me to me um, at the price I wanted to pay. You know, so yeah. I've previously picked up fertilizer like at a home improvement store. Um, and then, you know, trying to shop around a bit more. I hate to have stuff like that shipped to me, but it kind of is what it is or shipped to the hardware store that probably was like, are you going to pick this up? Cause it stinks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you look at this and I think that, you know, could, if I had a bed side by side, would they both be successful if I used one versus the, and then on the other one used, you know, garden tone in one plant on another, I'm sure they would be, you know, yeah. but there are a couple of things that that fold into it that I'm just probably not aware of. I do want to correct myself. I kept on saying evenly balanced and it no well balanced is the proper term. That's the term that yeah. I want to use because evenly balanced has you chasing around seven, 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 you know, and that's not necessary. No. And I don't think that evenly balanced. No. Yeah. Evenly balanced is the term you use. I don't think that's the answer. No. Personally, yeah, I know I'm looking well at balance, but I couldn't get yeah. to that word. Yeah, I'm looking at the and I think those are used interchangeably, though. No, and I, I don't uh, think it's appropriate. Look up, look it up on Britannica. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, I'm good. I was gonna say, I'm not looking anything up because I was looking at the tomato tone mm-hmm. and I've never used this. Um, and it's three, four, six. Mm. So, three, four, six that tells me like when you look at it, you don't want a lot of leaves. And then the phosphorus it helps with the nutrient uptake, and then the potassium helps for the fruiting development. 
So, you know, there's all kinds of ways you can do it. And I've never, ever really gotten into like, okay, I'm going to fertilize my tomatoes this way. I'm going to do this this way. I've never really done that. I try and find an all approach. And the way that I adjust is by adding, I keep a bag of um, blood meal and bone meal handy. And that's how I will adjust. I'm like, oh, like my sweet potatoes. I'll add a little bit of something in. I think it's bone meal I'll add in towards the middle. And then, you know, um, well, I don't really add, or no, for the corn this year, I'll probably add extra nitrogen. So I'll do that, you know, to keep them growing. But other than that, I don't get into multi bags of like different, like 10, 10, 10, 4, 3, 2, 1, 3, 8. You know, I don't do anything like that. And I just made up those numbers. So yeah, don't look for those. I definitely am. Um, I've tried potato fertilizer. I think I mentioned this before once because I, you know, kind of just felt like a womp, womp, womp when it came to my potato harvest. Um, but I am definitely more in line with like all purpose things. So yeah. this is going to be a statement that's made without any facts behind it i look at something like a tomato tone and the numbers are the numbers right and i'm sure if you study somewhere it probably says yeah you want you know phosphorus to be a little bit higher than nitrogen and so on um but i look at this like branding you know i was just gonna say you thought you were getting a free advertisement but here we yeah, go yeah <laughs> like i look at it like you have now branded this thing and i'm gonna go in there and say i'm growing tomatoes why wouldn't i get the tomato tone of course i'm gonna get the tomato tone yeah the reality is you could use tomato tone for other things in your garden too you know <laughs> so let's just be realistic but if you look at it with that whole you're drawn to it because it says tomato tone then you may be buying another type of fertilizer for everything else in your garden like i mean i think it's pretty slick and i don't mean that in a positive you know virtual well, high five kind of way let's break that down for a second though because look in today's world marketing sucks booties it's terrible um and it, it is it's a scam because you look at it and you're like well it's tomato tone i can only use this for my tomatoes mm. now this is the part and i just said this on my youtube channel i don't know if i've ever made this clear but my goal has been is not to tell you how to do something it's to help you figure it out for yourself and this is that moment so you look at tomato tone and we had i don't have the numbers pulled up in front of me but we'll, we'll say it was it's three four like, six i was gonna say three four six so it's it's thirty four six <laughs> just to make it confusing <laughs> gonna all of it, right? <laughs> <laughs> just to make it confusing but that the, the marketing makes you feel like it's only for tomatoes. I can only use this on my tomatoes and then I'll walk away. But once you think about what the nutrients do and what you're growing, then you can start putting it together and say, well, no, <clears throat> my peppers are the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I could use it on my peppers if you felt so inclined to use this product. Um, you know, your eggplants are the same thing. Now, let's say you've got summer chard. That's a totally different plant growing. You don't want to use that on your chard because the nutrients is, are not needed in that ratio. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. what we're doing is we're looking at these crops and we're saying, what do these nutrients do? How are they going to feed them? And what do these plants require? And what do they have in common? And then you can start putting these things together and you can bypass the pretty picture and just look straight at the number at the bottom and say, okay, this is what I want. You know, the fact that it has tomato in the name will give you the idea. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't, I couldn't listen intently and then also check the numbers, but you're probably paying a premium for that too. It's all about relatively the same. I think the premium comes in when you buy the, the overall garden and then you're like, well, I want the tomato one for my tomatoes or, and then I want a pepper one for my peppers. That's where they get you. They get you coming and going. Now I use a liquid fertilizer too. Um, it's basically a fish fertilizer. I've used a bunch of them. Um, the one that I'm using now is a three, three, two. And it's again, let's talk about the, the size of the numbers. It's not about how big the number is necessarily. It's more about the ratio. So you can use, and 
a well, let's just use well balanced or evenly balanced numbers for this. 20, 20, 20 mm-hmm. is just about the same as a 10, 10, 10. Mm-hmm. It's just about the same as a five, five, five. Um, the five, five, the five, five, five will be a little bit less potent, but don't get, I mean, you don't really find a lot. You won't find like a 50, 50, 50 or anything like that. Where it really comes in is when you have something like a 20 zero zero or a 30 zero zero or zero 30 zero or something like that. When you're putting concentrated amounts of a nutrient in your garden, that's when you want to be careful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I agree with that. I, I also look at this and I was browsing around and I saw, you know, cause I see this often too. It will say tomato and vegetable plants like as a fertilizer and, um, or a tomato and vegetable, whichever way they, they flip flop the word. So another organic brand that I've used before, not for this particular uh, variation of it, it has vegetable and tomato at two, five, three, you know, yeah. um, which again, you, you think generally speaking, um, they're probably talking about fruiting vegetables, right? Um, and if you're to transition just a little bit, if you're using these me- uh, fertilizer based on the measurement recommended, that whole is it twenty zero zero or is it you know three hundred and forty six or whatever have you? They'll make the adjustment when it comes to the recommendation. Now I say if you because I'm generally not because I'm kind of skimpy when it comes to those kind of things, how much I'm putting down, but. Um, we say you can't go wrong with a well-balanced fertilizer. You can't go wrong following the instructions that are given, right, on the packaging. You know, if you look at this and say there are too many numbers, there are too many, you know, conditions here, like that's your easy road. Like the cheat sheet is follow the instructions, right? Yeah. Um, I think the only other note I'd add would be um, also keep in mind, though, you don't have this many brands on the market. You don't have this many variations for there only to be one or two of them that work. So chances are what you pick up is going to work unless you're like the oh yeah, CB. <laughs> yeah on the ham radio mm-hmm. yeah. Well, and I mean you know if you go back to that gentleman for a minute, he was he was going to put in concentrated numbers mm-hmm. in his garden. And the older guy just came back and he's like, man, just put some 10, 10, 10 yeah. and some lime on it and call it a day. You know, he's like, don't, and basically when you read in between, I was like, don't overcomplicate yeah. it. Yeah. Put some food on it and walk away. And soil tests can call it, can send you down that path very easily mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because what they'll do is they'll give you certain nutrients you need to put in in order to push your garden, like get it right. But you've got to understand, you've got to take your soil sample right. You've got to interpret it correctly, and then you've got to get... And when I did it, they were recommending... Um, no, it wasn't them. So I ended up going to... I got a soil test. I went to the store with the results after I talked to the guy and decoded it. That was the other thing. And he had me putting in inorganic, like synthetic stuff in there. And so I did it, and I had a fire garden. But what that did is it immediately gave those nutrients to that garden. It didn't have to break down or anything. It just immediately went to it. So, um, and that was the last time I used something synthetic in my garden, which I don't not use anything synthetic for any particular reason. I just don't. Um, that was the last time I did that. I was like five, six years ago, but, um, I want to talk about when you're feeding your garden, let's say you've gone through the season and you, you forgot about this. And you came across this episode and you're like, I need to fertilize. What do I do? Well, this is where the liquid like fish fertilizers and stuff come in. Um, I will inject those into my drip system. And if I didn't, I would use a watering can. And let's say I came up and I was like, crap, I don't have it. My plants are looking bad. I need to fertilize. I'll go out there and I'll put my granular fertilizer in. And that exact same day, I will shoot them the fish fertilizer because it will immediately feed them that fish fertilizer even though it's synthetic it's it's organic it will still immediately be available to the plant so they can uptake it so they're getting a little boost to give them some time to let the other fertilizer start to break down because remember it doesn't do it immediately so it's like a balancing act so what i do in the summertime time yeah 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 well you're basically putting 
Neosporin on a cut. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to heal it faster. So what I'm do is I go, I do my pre-planting fertilizer, um, and in that for this time of year, I use an even a well balanced fertilizer. Man, see now you've got me yeah, all messed no, up, Batavia. I was trying it. to walk it back. Leonard, we need to dock Batavia on this one. Oh come on! <laughs> so I make the mistake. You're going to get a full destagulation. And the acknowledgement of the mistake is now getting me into trouble. How does that work? You get demerit for that. Because <laughs> now I can't speak openly. I have to think about something else. So I'll do the, an, an evenly balanced fertilizer. No, a well-balanced fertilizer. <laughs> and I will do the nitrogen in the beginning. And then I'll come back a month later and I'll put in another round of the well-balanced fertilizer and then I will do a dr- um, the fish fertilizer. Mm-hmm. And then about every six weeks after that, I'm coming back and I'm putting it in and doing that same thing. And I may, and the fish fertilizer, I just kind of use intermittently throughout. So if I see something, I'll hit the garden. Mm-hmm. If not, I'm good. It's not a big deal, but I try to kind of keep it coming to it. And that fish fertilizer is so gentle that it just kind of, it's it's like having a snack, yeah. You know, yeah. just giving a little snack here and there, keeping his belly full. Yeah, holding you over. Mm-hmm. Speaking of, how do you do it? You don't have a method. Speaking do of, you? oh well, good night. I don't know. I feel like hmm. Uh, so, but I know how you roll. That's pick, why I don't mean in a bad way. Well, but picking, like picking up from where I was sharing before, or resharing that bit of it. Start the season with compost. You know, a bit of granular fertilizer planting mulching you know continuing with the watering for probably i don't know that i do it by time i think i do it by like if i use my tomatoes as a good example i'll come back in and top dress where i'll scratch in you know so i'll scratch up the soil around the plants and add more granular fertilizer i'll do that probably about a month and a half in I'm trying to get the gauge of like how big the plants are. So they've not set fruit yeah. yet. Right. You know, but the plants have gotten, you know, probably four or five feet if I'm either if it's determinate or indeterminate, you know, so now I'm getting next ready for that next stage of fruiting. And I want to give them another taste of the good stuff. I do have leafy things in my garden in summer where they're not necessarily the heaviest of feeders, but you still want to give them something to chew on. Y'all know my beloved collards are in my garden most of the year. I know that's not everyone's story, but I'll have those or chard or celery that's still in my garden from the cooler weather through the warmer weather. That's a great opportunity to come in and do some, you know, a liquid fertilizer like you know, a fish emulsion, right? Um, my containers, I do the same thing I started with. There's the mixture, soil mixture is going to have some compost in it. So I'm not doing anything special there. Adding a bit of granular fertilizer at the beginning of the planting. But I may come in, you know, it could be, it's probably around six months, six weeks later, but then I'm going to come in at the 12 week mark too. You know, and again, I'm just roughing out this the time frame. Most of my in ground plants probably get fertilized, and I'm just telling you what I do. I'm not suggesting you even do this, but in ground plants probably get fertilized two, maybe three times because I'm looking at something that's you know feeding for a couple of months. My containers, it's going to be like once a month. I'm trying to get in there and give them some nutrients because yeah. I'm losing much more of it from those containers than I am with the um, raised beds, I should say, not in ground. You know, it's interesting listening to you talk about fertilizer on this episode because we did another episode and you're much more methodical than you... Let on to be? Let on, yeah. Yeah, it's a secret of my success. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I don't like it because I'm supposed to know everything about you and I feel like you're hiding from me. We need to have some offline conversations. Yeah, you know what, though? But I am I prefer to say on this first day of May, I do this thing and then on this day and I don't have it that tight, you know, and so I probably was just a little bit, you know, 
more rigid in my conversation then because I didn't want to kind of say, hey, this is what I kind of do. And I'm still right. in the tweaking phase of it. But you made me so comfortable in this conversation when you're like, you know, <laughs> what do you do? Kind of like you really don't have a, a method, right? You know, So I'm like, yeah. wait, I, I see put, your, you know, I injection you. and I meet you with when the plants are so four think- feet tall. <laughs> See, y'all think I'm being mean to Batavia, but sometimes you just got to push Batavia and then she'll just spill the beans. Yeah, yeah, that's true, too. That's true, too. <laughs> now, you, you said something that really came to mind, too. Um, and let's say you don't want to have a schedule, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. you want to look at your plants. Um, you know, as soon as I see tomatoes flowering, like first flowers, really, I, I start thinking about fertilizing. Yeah. Because you want that fertilizer. You're like, if you catch it at the right time and you're like, cool, I see blossoms, bam, let me drop it, then you're going to start feeding at the correct time. It's just like with onions. It's kind of the opposite. But with onions, as soon as they start to bulb, mm-hmm. you stop feeding. Mm-hmm. And that's your visual cue. You don't wait time-wise. You just say, hey, it's they're bulbing, no more feeding. And then you stop. Yeah, they're, um, the tomatoes, I'm always trying to hedge my bets for... Uh, to avoid blossom in rot, which uh-huh. we know there are a couple of ways you can get that, you know, so especially if I'm growing in an area where I haven't grown tomatoes before, I kind of consider that um, if it's a larger tomato, um, which doesn't tie to blossom in rot, but to Ben's earlier point, a larger tomato, just meaning the fruit itself will be large right like i've had like two pound tomatoes like i know they're going to need more than my cherry tomato plant right you know so um it's a really good point when it comes to those tomato plants and the fruiting of it um and it's a really good like that's probably the most direct way the most direct crop when it comes to onions like the easiest signal they're starting yeah. to, the bulb is starting to form stop fertilizing because all of the other crops that have those kind of specific needs, it's a lot to keep in your head. But throw back to the earlier part of the episode. And I also want to believe that my memory is strong enough and active enough to keep all of this in my head, but it's not. Add your notes to the planter app if you're using that to say, hey, this is when I fertilize a thing. This is when I plan on fertilizing a thing. I, at some point back in March... I, I gave, you know, I raised my hands and said, all right, you can have it. Like I have like 16 or 17 different beds, varying sizes. And I got to the backyard and I'm like, I don't even know what the hell I'm planting in the cage baby this year. Like and I had to pull up the planter app like, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. You know, it's a lot to try to keep in your head or keep in various places when it comes to what you're planting, you know, ro- crop rotation, the fertilizing schedules, those things that are heavy feeders next to the things that aren't. It's a lot. Well, let's talk about Blossom In Rot for a second. Be proud of yourself like, if you do keep track of it all. I like talking about Blossom In Rot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, what is Blossom In Rot? It's the, Do you know? the uh, I don't know the scientific description of it, but it's, Do you know what causes it? So people oftentimes say calcium, mm-hmm. right? You know, and so it's described as a deficiency in calcium, right? Right. But then you also have the folks like young Ben who's going to say, is your plant just not able to take in that calcium? Maybe it's yes. there, but maybe it's not able to absorb it. Exactly. And that's exactly where we're going to fall into this. So blossom end rot is a calcium deficiency. It, and without a soil test, you don't know. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. a huge mystery. Mm-hmm. You could either not have calcium or your plant cannot uptake calcium. Well, what helps that plant uptake calcium? Phosphorus and potassium. And what adds potassium? The P and the K. So we know that. And what are some good ways to add that into your soil? Bone meal. Having the right pH, so lime is a good thing. Um, adding wood ashes, like if you have like a fire or something, you can add that in the winter time. Don't go crazy, but you add all this stuff in there. You, if you're using the right balance of nutrients, then you're going to be the roots will be able to uptake it more. And I can t- prove it because I had calcium de- deficiency one year. I kept getting blossom in rot on my watermelons. Got a test, went out there, and they're like, get some calcium spray to fix it immediately. So I was out there spraying calcium spray on it. Guess what? I didn't have any more blossom end rot. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I stopped. Guess what happened? I got blossom end rot, got the soil test. 
And then they were like, well, you have plenty of calcium, but your plants have no way to do it because I was low on potassium. So that's when I was like, okay. And that's when I started adding bone meal into my repertoire, doing stuff like that. So everybody's always like, put a Tums in the soil, it'll fix it. Well, it will help with it, but it doesn't fix your problem. You need to be giving the right nutrients the whole time. Now, does that sound confusing to you? Because it sure as heck sounds confusing to me. So we just make sure we're giving a well-balanced fertilizer and you're kind of evening that out over time. Yeah, I think that uh, for my containers, I run into it probably more often than I do for my raised beds. But I've been dripping on y'all about, you know, kind of the difference in growing in containers versus not. Uh, Leonard, if you can do a favor for me, add to our next Patreon and subscription episode kind of behind the scenes on when Ben prompts me to say, you know, what does this mean? I want to talk to the the audience about my take on kind of that style of podcasting. Um, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're too, we need to get to the question of the day and there's no sense. And it's, it's, you know, that audience is a little bit more quaint. So when I unload, you know, I want them to, to know that this is just between us. <laughs> If you could see her laser eyes right now, you'd know that I just got a demerit as well. So, but I mean, it, it's one of those things and it's, it's unfortunate that there's a lot of, it's almost misinformation mm-hmm, yeah. about these things. And it's a simple fact of, of just nutrition in general. Mm-hmm. Um, just like, you know, studies show that ex- excess calcium in our diets creates osteoporosis the lack of being able to absorb calcium in our own bodies it could do the same thing in your gardens so um i don't ever and i i hope i can speak for batavia on this recommend adding a nutrient like a mineral specific to your garden without knowing what needs to go into it is that safe to say batavia safe to say okay well said well said there we go so that's that um, we, we have our, uh, listener question of the day, which is actually, we're going to do a two for today. I think maybe, um, we have one from Spotify, which by the way, we're trying to move away from Spotify. So try to email us at BYG question at gmail.com or go to our Facebook page, um, our group backyard gardens, community garden, and you can leave questions there. Just label them question of the day and we'll get to them. And we also sometimes handpick them too, but um, this is easier to keep track of. Uh, Muhammad Ali, awesome name, asks from Spotify, um, which cover crops? And he asked for February, which is a very hard one. Mm-hmm. But um, mm-hmm. in general, which cover crops to use? Now, I'm going to go ahead and just spoiler alert. We're not going to have a great answer right now, but in the next episode, we will give answers for this. Um, do you, what is your knowledge on cover crops right now, Batavia? Right now, before I start doing a deep dive on the internet about cover crops, um, the reason why I believe you said February is a hard month is because when you plant cover crops, the intention is to let them grow to a certain state and then cut those crops and kind of till that matter back into the soil. And so for me, February, that's impossible for me to do because right. my garden soil is frozen most times, unless you have a right. really unseasonably warm winter like we had here in Chicago. Um, but that's what I know about cover crops. There's some that, based on whatever the crop is, will feed that garden area that, you know, the farm area more so than others. So all cover crops aren't created equal. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, Muhammad, my aunt. So, wait. Well, hold on. Wait. Yeah. Hey, one Muhammad. to five. What's your knowledge level of it? Wait, no. Uh, hey, Muhammad. I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> and you get a bill. We, man, we're slacking today. So, one to five. What would you consider your knowledge level as uncover crops right now? I, one to five uh, being best. I hate these scales. I, there's, I do too. there's a lot that I hate, but I hate the scales. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say a two. Really? Mm-hmm. I would I would say about a three for me. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and that's kind of stretching a little bit. <laughs> but what I do know, and we are doing, and I've been doing research on it, and we'll bring it to you um, on the next episode, is it's not, you, it's not a one-size-fit-all approach. And when you talk about planting a garden... Using a cover crop takes extensive planning because you have to, you can't just put a seed down and say, okay, we're going to give it two weeks and then we're good. You've, you've got to plan for that period of time for that garden to not be used and to be cultivating this crop. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So in the winter time, which I don't know where Muhammad lives, I'm imagining it must be somewhere where you can grow year round. Um, you know, winter grass and stuff like that is a good, like kind of overall, but there's certain things to keep into account for cover crops, like, you know, having them naturalize in your garden where they're dropping seeds and then they become out of control. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We want to make sure we manage that appropriately. So, um, it, it's more useful if you say like, Hey, I want to correct this in my garden. What cover crops should I use? So it's, it's really not a one size fit all. Now, what we're going to focus on is a handful of them mm-hmm. that are basically well-rounded cover crops. Uh, so that's going to be coming up, hopefully, in the next episode, unless something crazy happens and we have to talk about something different. Uh, we're not well-planned like that, just so you know. We <laughs> we do reserve the right to change. But, um, yeah, just look for uh, Muhammad. I would say figure out what you want to fix, like what purpose you want the cover crop for, and in the month of February, you want to look for a winter kill cover crop. That's those are the terms I would use a winter kill cover crop. And then that will help you get started. Or you can just come into the next episode and see what we can drop for you. How you like Nicely that? Done. Yep. And Mohammed, I'm sorry that we didn't get Batavia to say hey to you in time. We were, we're slacking today. No, I gave him two hays though. Two. Now you got three. Yeah. Hey, hey, and more hay. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> It, never mind. So, um, yeah, check us out. And just so you guys know, we are we have seeds for fall for the store. And we will be, hopefully, by the time this airs, they will be loaded. So you can start to get those. So check us out at Backyard Gardens on Etsy. And uh, go get the planter up. All that good stuff. But um, And get some fertilizer. And remember, learn to grow and grow for change. See ya. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in. Thanks for checking out the show. If you like what we're doing and you'd like to support us, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash backyard gardens, or you can be an Apple subscriber. And in both of those, you'll get an extra episode every month. You can also make a one-time PayPal donation with the link below. And you can get all kinds of gardening gear, like t-shirts and mugs and cups from the link below at Teespring. And we have an Amazon store, which has all the products that we use and recommend in our gardens and it helps support our show and we also add to this list periodically so be sure to check it out periodically to see if there's anything that you need for your garden everything that you do including a like and a subscribe and even a review will help us learn to grow and grow for change see ya